On this episode, building trust and relationships. Hey everybody, this is The Quarter Show. Welcome back. We're talking about, okay, so look, I hear a lot, you know, in sales and LinkedIn and different books and blah, 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 people talk about, and this might be you, so hopefully I don't offend anybody, but people talk about, whoa, you gotta build trust. You gotta be, you gotta make relationships. You got, I'm a relationship salesperson, you know? <laughs> it's like, look, Okay, of course, yes, you have to have some level of relationship. Um, but frankly, I don't, I, I've told people, I don't want you to trust me. I don't want to trust you. I don't want you to trust me. It's not about trust for me. It's, it's, about, it's about I've delivered a product. I've delivered a service. I've put something in front of them. I'm solving a problem. I'm handling something precisely for you. I have the stats. I have the case studies, I have the proof, and I can show, and I can show that my product, my company, our awards, our stats, our this, is gonna solve your problem, it solves other people's problems, it handles an exact need, it's a perfect fit for you, and this is gonna work, right? And this is this is gonna work, and it's exactly tailored to you, and, and then by that, we're gonna go make a sale, we're gonna, we're gonna come together, you're gonna pay the money, I'm gonna deliver the product or service, and we're gonna make this happen. We're going to solve that problem, and, and that's going to build a relationship and build a trust because we did it, right? And a lot of people talk about like, oh, I, 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 I'm a relationship salesperson. Well, let me tell you something. There, there was a Harvard study that was done, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read some stuff to you here, and, and it talked about how the actual, there's a real misnomer out there, it says the article is called Selling is Not About Relationships, and what they found was that relationship salespeople were the worst performers in the bunch. And the top performer was, was what they referred to as a challenger salesperson. The worst performer was a sales, was, was a relationship seller. A trust building relationship seller, they performed the worst. Okay, so when you look at it, it says <clears throat> every sales professional falls into one of five distinct profiles. Uh, one is relationship builders, two is hard workers, three is lone wolves, four is reactive problem solvers, and five is challengers. It says challengers dramatically outperform the other profiles, particular, particularly relationship builders. Okay. It says challengers teach their customers. Challengers tailor their sales message to the customer. Challengers take control of the sale. And then here it says the relationship builder adopts a service mentality while the challenger is focused on customer value. The relationship builder is more concerned with convenience. At the end of the day, a conversation with a relationship builder is probably professional, even enjoyable, but it isn't as effective because it doesn't ultimately help customers make progress against their goals. The finding that relationship or that the finding that challengers win and relationship builders lose. Okay? This is important. This is important if you're in sales because don't go out with this false information in your head that you're a relationship builder and you have to build trust and you hear these things online. Look, the truth is if somebody's coming and selling me, I don't want to trust you. I, and and, and be, to be honest, I, I, I'm i not looking to make relationships. You know, I, I'm looking to solve distinct problems. And that's not me being, I'm not saying heartless. I, I, I really enjoy the people I talk to. Like when I talk to my customers and, and prospects and, and fellow employees, I have, like I enjoy it. But when I'm on a mission and I need to buy something, I don't go out, I'm not like, well, you know, I need to build a relationship with the people at GoPro, right? And I really, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I wanna know that this is the best product. I like this product, I like what it is. I like exactly what it is. And I'm gonna take it on my vacation in Kauai to go and like get some killer shots, you know? And it's no different in, in B2B, when you look at it, you need to go, you need to understand how to solve a problem. You need to know these, the people on the other end of the phone or in front of you, you need to know them cold. You need to know your industry. You need to know what they're dealing with. You need to know their pain points. You need to understand what's happening with them. 
utterly. And then you need to tailor and, and curate to that problem. You need to solve that problem utterly. And then you need to make sure that you have a killer product, you have a killer service, you know that your operation, your, your company can deliver on those promises, can make it happen. And by doing that, you're gonna sell so hard and bring value so hard and paint the picture so strongly, you, you don't need to rely on relationships and trust. I mean, you could go build on relationships and trust and if you don't do the other things and you can't deliver and you don't, do, you don't solve the problem, they're gonna be pissed. Yeah, I mean, the primary thing that I see with the, with the relationship thing is, is it, limits, it limits you to do a couple of different things. And if you've been in sales long enough, you've, you've probably experienced this phenomenon where, if, where you try to <clears throat> mold yourself to your prospect when you're trying to build a relationship. You start to take on characteristics of yourself or act certain ways that really aren't you. And it, yeah. it really can muddy the water and make things a little bit strange and throw you off your own game. It's really an odd thing to, to try to do that because and then and then on the flip side though if you're like cool I'm gonna this is how I build relationships and maybe I'm a you know a, a good old southern boy or maybe I'm a you know a, a, an, an LA you know an LA slick person or whatever you know it's like you limit the number of people that you can build a, 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 a relationship with instead of just instead of just bringing your business to the table you're bringing a personality to the table and a, pe people I mean one of the things I talk about in live video, Live video shoots, you know, when you're putting a human being on camera, you know, there, there's a time and a place to do that. But people make snap judgments on other human beings. When they see them, when they hear them, when they experience how they talk, they make snap judgments and subconscious decisions about I like or I don't like on all mm -hmm. sorts of things. So it's like, let's leave that part aside because what you're really trying to do is bring that solution to the table anyway. You know, it's like I knew a handsome young man who could sell widgets to girls in the mall all day long. But he couldn't really sell the family. He couldn't really sell the gentleman. He couldn't sell the you know the kid. He could he could sell he could sell cute girls. That was what he could do. Yeah, and the, and the yeah. relationship trust building thing. I mean, sometimes it, it goes two ways. It's like it's a bit of a crutch. It's a bit of an excuse to take too long on a deal. It's like you're you're I'm trying to build a relationship. It's like no, you're not confronting what you need to do. You're not actually solving the problem. You're not getting to the right people. You're not actually making inroads. You're not campaigning effectively. And you're sitting here saying, you're making excuses, essentially saying, well, I'm a relationship builder, and well, you need to build trust. I saw somebody the other day, we, there was some comment on LinkedIn, some person says, you know, uh, you know, I, I hate when somebody makes a connection and then they message me directly after, which I don't do, but I understand what they're saying, but the person's in a position where they're going to get those kind of things all the time. Their actual title is going to be harvesting those things all the time. But then one of the comments in reply was somebody said, well, yeah, it's true. You should make a connection and then wait 30 days. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I've never oh, heard. You of know that. what? 30 days is gonna be like. Like, <laughs> it's a complete arbitrary. Like, that's a completely arbitrary piece of data. And there's this data out there about, well, you need to take time to build trust. Like, what over LinkedIn? You're gonna, you're gonna like over the LinkedIn messaging? No. You need to understand that person. You need to find a way to actually get to that person and have a productive conversation. Care about that person. Curate your conversation to that person. You know actually solve a problem for that person and very quickly the relationship's going to build if you do the right moves and say the right things and that person understands that wow you're really competent and you know what you're talking about you know them and you know and your product solves that problem but if we're sitting here kind of playing games about well this and you send this message and then in 30 days later and then we need to build trust it's like it's a bunch of baloney don't listen to it i mean just reflecting on it right now i build trust by Understanding great. by understanding yeah. what what they what they're thinking yeah. about by understanding the problem that they have, mm -hmm. and then and then without them having to tell me very much, bring the solution to the table and explain how it solves that. Thing, yeah, right. And they're like, oh my. Like goodness. in the first five minutes of a phone call, you should be able to build trust and relationship because they know that wow, this person's competent. Yeah, they're not playing any games. You don't have to pull any sales tactics because you know what you're talking about. You know them, and you know their company and their problem, cold. Yeah, and if you can do that. Let me tell you, the, the confidence in the phone call spikes right away. Yeah. The, the trust in the trust in the relationship that happens immediately. Yeah, you know, and and so it's <laughs> something to think with. I'm, I welcome comments on this. I'm sure it's a bit of a hot topic, but I the the, the data is right there. It says challengers dominate the world of complex selling solutions. You know, and you know a lot of people try and push back. Well, I need to make a relationship. No, challengers outperform by a ton and the relationship is the worst selling category yeah like if you, you know, if you think your product's not very good then by all means build relationships and, and there, trick people, people into trusting silly, them like, right? like, trick them into trusting them and then, and then you don't have <laughs> what it takes but like people, so people are not dumb right like you're spending all the time trying to build a relationship like 
focus on your product, focus on them, focus on understanding those things, focus on curating, and then focus on taking charge of the sale and controlling it and moving it where it needs to go. And have when you do have an opportunity to have an email or you do have an opportunity to have a phone call, make it effective, right? Make it effective and show that you know what you're talking about. Show that you're actually solving a real problem for them and you're bringing real value for them. And things will happen quickly after that. Okay? Hope that helps. Hope you like that one. Uh, more coming at you soon here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel as well and, and share it with your sales team. Okay? Share with your sales team. Right. Thanks all. <laughs>